morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome back to another week in my life vlog. My name is Katie and I am a fourth year first grade teacher and I'm so glad you're tuning in for this week's video. I feel like I have not vlogged in a while. Last week I took a break from doing a weekly vlog and I filmed a classroom tour slash organization video instead. And by the time you're watching this one, that one is already up. So I will link it in the cards if you missed that one. It was a pretty in-depth tour of my entire classroom. When I did the edit all together, I was like, oh my gosh, this was longer than I expected. But I hope it gives you like a good idea of what my classroom looks like, how I organize things, and some of the things that I've purchased to keep the classroom nice and neat. And honestly, last week was just rough anyways, so it was nice to take a week off from vlogging just to kind of focus on teaching, and it was just a rough week, let's be real. It is currently um, about 7.05, which is way earlier than I usually get here. I'm usually here around 7.10. I got here today at like 6.50. Um, I came way early because Friday was just, let's, let's just say Friday was one of like my roughest days this school year and I had a lot of rough days back in like September if we're being honest and it felt like a September day in the middle of um, what month are we in February I was just like oh my goodness what was going on and so after school was over I called my mom I cried on the phone I don't even remember what I did before I left on Friday I just went home because I was like I am so done I'm exhausted and I'm usually pretty good at getting my things prepared ahead of time so I know I didn't have a whole lot to do but I did just need to go home and take the weekend and take the two days to not think about school at all. And so that's exactly what I did. <laughs> and so I came back a little bit early on Monday because that meant last night I was having a hard time sleeping and this morning I kept waking up because I was thinking about everything I had to do. So yeah, there's a little bit of reality for y'all. Yeah, this week is our Black History Month Spirit Week. So I am excited that we're having some like spirit days to kind of lift the mood. I stopped and got a coffee because I could get bonus points uh, for getting a coffee today. So now I have a free coffee in my reward. So that's exciting. I could wear jeans. Hello. That was exciting for this week for spirit week. Um, I have a new lanyard. I haven't shown this in my vlog yet, but I got like the teacher lanyard from Alicia's store on, in uh, not Instagram, on Etsy. So I'll link her Instagram and I'll put her Etsy in the description so you can go get one if you want. It's the teacher lanyard. I got it last week. So this has been a highlight and like it makes this outfit look so cute, even though it's just a t-shirt. I was like, yeah, I feel so teachery. So I'm doing like all I can to hype myself up and to make today a better day. First thing I want to do is show you my two new literacy centers that we're doing this week because I've swapped those out and then I'm going to knock some things off of my checklist. Okay y'all, first up is the word work bucket. We are doing like a review week this week. We're recapping all of the phonics skills we've learned since we came back in January because we've done a lot of vowel teams and it was getting to be a lot so we just needed to pause and review and then we're also reviewing all of unit three in our wonders curriculum so inside the bucket i have these sight word cards that go with unit three for wonders i got them from a facebook page that um, has a bunch of educators who teach first grade and use wonders but you could make these for your sight words for your program on powerpoint you just have to find a font that's an outline or a big chunky font and then like change the settings to be outline only and it kind of makes the sight words like this and what they're going to do is take these mini erasers and they lay the sight word down and they use the erasers to fill in the word so it practices spelling the word and then they read it and then they flip it i don't usually put sight word stuff in my word work bucket i usually keep it as like phonics practice but since we're doing a review week and we're going over so many phonics skills i thought that would be really good to do for a center for them to review those sight words Sorry the air conditioner is loud back here, but then for our writing center, I have a bunch of these made for lots of different phonics skills. They are just sentence puzzles. I think I've shown them before, but I will show you again. Um, They're color-coded, so all of the green ones, when you put them together, make a sentence. I believe this one practices long E, because that's one of the vowel teams we've practiced. Okay, so here we go. we got need, feed, him, to, and I. So what the students do is they put the sentence together, and they figure out it says I need to feed him. So it's working on sentence structure. They can also use the capital letter and the period as a hint. And sometimes I'll like model it with them and we kind of practice it the wrong way. Like I too need feed him. And they're like, no, that doesn't make sense. So we kind of keep moving the words around until we figure out the sentence. Then once they figure out the sentence, they record it on the piece of paper and then they move on to the next sentence puzzle. Like let's look at this blue one. I think it's shorter. 
seat your stay so stay in your seat so that is what our writing center is this week and i have these for a lot of different phonics skills like this bag is just for long e but last year i made a bunch of them so almost every phonics skill has a bag with sentence puzzles like this just made out of sentence strips It still isn't stirred all the way. Like I can taste all the flavoring at the bottom, which makes me know that the top's gonna be like straight coffee. <laughs> it's pretty mixed. Okay, the main things that I have on my to-do list that I need to do before kids get here this morning. First, I want to make a copy of a fluency passage to use at the teacher table. Each day during small groups, we're gonna focus on a different phonics skill that we've already gone over. So today we're reviewing R controlled like A-R, E-R, I-R, and O-R at the table. Um, but I also wanted to practice some fluency with them because that's something we don't get to a lot at the teacher table because I do so much explicit phonics. So we'll do the phonics skill, we'll practice mapping words, we do sight word practice, and then sometimes by the end of the week, especially with my higher group, I get to like sentences and passages, but with my lower group, it's like explicit phonics the whole time. So what I want to do is copy some fluency passages since this is a review week. There's no new phonics skill that we're learning and maybe do like a, a fluency read where they just read the passage every day and we time them. I, I don't know, like my lower group's going to have to be very scaffolded with that. My high group, I'm going to be able to give it to them, read, and then we can count how many words they read in a minute. So, well, I'm going to kind of like play around with it and see. I think we use um, Ames Web to do progress monitoring for our tier two and tier three. So I think I'm going to pull an Ames Web story that those groups have already read like back in September because they're pretty decodable from the beginning and they kind of like gradually increase in difficulty. So it starts with like short vowel words and then the complexity and vowel teams start to come as you keep reading. So I think I'm gonna go down and copy one of those and I have to do that this morning because small groups are first thing in the morning. So that's like a must do. The other goals that I have for my day or I need, I, this is a must do by the end of the day. I need to do the Valentine's Day letter with all my students' names so I'm ready to send that home with information because that'll be next Monday so they can start getting their Valentines and all that together and get them labeled for next Monday. And then I also want to start on lesson plans. Our team takes turns putting lesson plans into plan book for the whole grade level and I'm putting them in for next week. So my goal for today is to have the reading section of that finished and then tomorrow maybe I'll work on math and then the next day science and social studies. I don't know, I'm just gonna pace myself. So I'm looking at my <laughs> to-do list as I'm talking, but I, uh, my goal is to do the reading one. So I've got the reading one and the Valentine's list and the copies of the fluency passage. So it's time to start because it is now 7.20. Um, yeah, so let's get started. <laughs> the Valentine's letter. I have no clue where this template came from because I got it my first year teaching and I just updated it on Google Docs. But here's our little class letter and then if I scroll down, which I'm not going to, I have a list of student names. So now I'm going to print this on some AstroBright paper so I can put it in their mailboxes. <music> Okay, I was able to successfully finish the Valentine's letters and I got the fluency passage copied. So what I'll do today during planning is work on those reading plans. And right now I'm just like looking through stuff that I'm gonna teach at small group. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna let you guys go. Okay, we made it to the end of the day. I have a little bit of time, like uh, 30 actually. I don't know what time my meeting starts. How many weeks have we done this? I think it starts at 3.15, maybe. Or maybe it starts at 3.30, 3.30. Okay, let me check my email and find out. 
Okay, the meeting is at 3.30. This is like February and we have this meeting every Monday. So I don't know why I couldn't figure that out. So I have about like, actually I have 38 minutes, which is a long time that I can use to grade papers and make sure the classroom is reset for the morning. Um, since I showed you guys my reading centers this morning, let me continue on the reading train. I'll show you what our review slides look like, what we're doing in whole group for reading. And then maybe like tomorrow or later this week, I'll update you in math. Here is just a brief overview. I always use slides. If you know me and you've watched my vlogs, you know this. So I made one for our review week. Day one, we did our phonemic awareness warm up. We practiced generating a rhyme. And then in the description below, I always have some phonemic awareness examples where I had three words, two of them rhyme, one of them does not. They had to tell me which one did not match. Then we went into our phonics review. So we reviewed all of our R controlled vowel teams today are or and then the three ways to make the er sound and let me show you what we made when we went over this so when we got to these slides i gave each student a ziploc baggie and we made some sound cards to go inside that they'll be able to take home at the end of the week so we put the sound on one side and then an example word and underline the sound in it so r cart or storm er, bird, etc. And then I gave them the baggie. This week, we're keeping all of our review sounds in our pencil box. And then at the end of the week, I'll tell them to take it home and teach it to a grown up at home. So after we reviewed there, we did a practice page that um, I don't know where I got it. So if I find it, I'll link it. If not, it's called bossy r dot pages. Um, and we just had to color in. I just had them color it with a crayon because I don't have enough dot markers for everyone. But if I did this at small group, I would totally do the dot markers because that's so fun. So we read the word fern. They had to dot the correct bossy r and then write it in the blank. So that was a fun review. And that's all we got to today, honestly. But I also had review high frequency words from unit three, week one, and then our story from unit three, week one. So that's kind of what it looks like again tomorrow day two it's the same format we have a phonemic awareness warm-up where we're identifying the common vowel sound fly pie kite all have long i and i have other examples that are hidden that i would give them just verbally we're reviewing our a i a y vowel teams we've got our song to go over that then we're going to practice our activity tomorrow is of course we'll make our sound cards again with a i and a y and then we'll practice writing them on whiteboards with partners We've got our high frequency words and then our story. So that's kind of like the pattern that I'm using for my review week slides. So that's just about everything we're doing reading wise this week. I'm going to go ahead and grade whatever I can get out of that stack of papers that's like gradable um, and finish that up and then set up math journals and all of that for the morning. The only thing left on my to-do list, which I'm super pumped for, look at this to-do list all cross off. Um, the only thing left is I need to take my copies that I printed and go put them in the copy room for our um, para who does copies to do tomorrow. So that's exciting. And then I also had, um, I need to request a sub because I'm taking some days off in the near future, but I can't get into the um, database or whatever it's called to request a sub. So I had to email somebody to help me get a password and stuff because I'm just not set up still. So I emailed about that and I'm just leaving it on my list until I can actually secure a sub and then I will cross it off. But that's it. I'm going to grade and then I'm going to meet in our meeting and then go home. morning y'all it is Tuesday I am back up at the school um, I'm here a little early I have morning duty on Tuesdays shocker I'm always here a little early so I feel like I don't have to say that every day um, I have a couple of different tasks that I want to get done today so I thought I'd show you kind of what's on my checklist first thing yesterday I did reading plans for my grade level for next week so today my focus is going to be on finishing up the math plans for next week on plan book so our grade level plans are set next i made a homework sheet last uh, yesterday i made a homework sheet yesterday for next week for our long o sounds and homework sheets aren't too hard to make so i was thinking i could go ahead and knock out 
the next week and the next week. So I'd be like three weeks ahead on like my homework cover page, which would be the O W O U, the owl sound, and then the O I O Y oi sound. So I'm gonna try to do that today. Um, I also need to print off some math journal questions. I have a couple left, so it'll take me through like Thursday this week, but then I'm gonna be out. So I need to print out some math journal questions today. And then I need to review our science lesson because last week we did observations using our five senses. They came up with a great anchor chart. I'll show it to you in just a second. Um, with a, bu a bunch of different like descriptive words and today we're doing um, sink or float with the objects that we observed last week and we did like an observation chart on them yesterday so we drew a picture and we wrote one word that described them so today we're using those same objects and we're going to do sink or float but I need to review the lesson because I, I like don't know if it goes beyond just does the item sink does it float or if we explain why because this is first grade and I didn't teach the standard in Alabama so this is one that is unique to Florida first grade science. And so anyways, I've just got to review that and know what I'm teaching this afternoon. <laughs> so those are my like four things on my to-do list. I'm gonna start off by working on some math plans. I have my TE out with me with the week at a glance section and I'm just gonna plan out. I think I only have two more lessons. I started yesterday, so I only have a couple more lessons to do there. And then I'll just keep going down the list. Here's their awesome anchor chart. All of these words on the side were student generated. So they helped me brainstorm the five senses. And then we talked about if we were going to taste something to observe it, what kind of descriptive words could we use? So they came up with spicy, sweet, gross, sour, salty, all of those words. And then I kind of like grouped some of them. Like I gave them the word texture, but that was one of our vocabulary terms. And same with size and volume. So they came up with the descriptive words and then we just showed how they could be categorized. news I finished the math plans for next week and I finished both homework pages so I will be like three weeks ahead on homework um, they're not too hard to make because I just kind of change the dates on the front swap out the sight words and then on the back page I always put like I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not let me take it apart on the back page I always make like a phonics word list at the top so here's the oi sound and then some kind of decodable text at the bottom for them to read during the week and I get this printed front and back so this is the cover page and then I attach any math pages from our math send home workbooks that they need to do for the week. So that's about all that I do for homework. I put like the skill up there. Yeah. So I took all my stuff yesterday afternoon to the copy room for the lady to copy it today. Um, and I left a pretty big stack because I was trying to get ahead like three weeks on copies, which is pretty intense. So she hasn't copied them yet. So I'm going to go put this on the top of that stack while I go down there for morning duty. So yay, I was productive. I will check in with you guys at the end of the day today. I've got meetings during planning and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I'll check in at the end and kind of update you on what we've been doing in math because I know yesterday I talked a lot about reading. And yeah, I'll see y'all later. Y'all, I just walked back in my room after dismissal. It stinks in here. Like It is smelly. I have like a scent thing all the way back there at the writing center and I need to look and see I don't know where I put the refills or if I left those at home but we need one bad because it smells bad in here so before I leave today I'm just making a mental note I need to spray the whole place down with Odoban <laughs> yeah that's what I'll need to do Okay, I just finished most of the messages that I needed to do and I put all of our math work from today in the grade book. I'm trying to just take something for a grade, put it in there and have a couple grades every week and be more consistent about that this year. And that's been a work in progress, but we're getting there. Um, so I told you I would talk about math. Get ready because the math rant begins now. If you are one of my friends or you are married to me, AKA my husband, or you are my mother, you have heard this rant a couple of times. I will make it brief. I do not like the math pacing for this curriculum and it just mixes a bunch of skills together in one unit that I don't think should be mixed. In my professional, personal opinion, adding, subtracting, revisit adding, revisit subtracting. That way students who weren't ready to get it at the beginning can get it at the end. Um, like can pick it up the next time. Then you should do missing add-in problems, as in I have 10 crayons, five are red, the rest are blue. How many are blue? Because once they've solidified adding and subtracting, they can do missing add-in better. Then you can go into comparison problems, 
Like Jim's fish is four inches long, Kim's is two. How many inches longer is Jim's fish than Kim? Okay, so that's a very complex skill that requires knowledge of like a solid foundation of adding and subtracting. Then you go into like tens and ones, etc., etc. Okay, and throw in some shapes in there to just break up the monotony of doing adding and subtracting, like throw it in there. And that's how my old math curriculum worked. This one does not. Like I'm talking in the first and second chapter of subtraction, they were throwing in missing add-in problems. Like, like Jim has four frogs, some of them hop away, now he has one, how many frogs does he have? Like yes, you can solve that with four minus one, but if you're throwing that in with basic subtraction, then all the kids are doing is like pulling the numbers and plugging them in and doing, oh, four minus one because we're doing subtraction, but they don't actually understand what's happening in the problem. They don't understand that the missing part is what was taken away. And that, that's where I'm gonna end that rant. I mean, it's just like, this is supposed to be a subtraction unit. Okay, now the one we're on is supposed to be missing add-ins, but the ones before were supposed to be subtracting and adding, and there were so many like missing add-in, missing um, difference, all of that stuff, comparison, all crammed into one. That like all my kids know how to do is number grab. They don't know how to make sense of like what they're doing in the problem. So now when we get to this chapter and they are supposed to do missing add ins some of them it's clicking, some of them it's not. Things that I found helpful. Number lines. Oh my goodness. Like that should be a red flag for a curriculum to start with. If there's only like maybe three lessons in about five chapters that use a number line. Hello. So I've been doing a lot of activities with the number line a lot and my students have been very successful with it and it really helps them see missing add-in problems and we were doing adding and subtracting fact families and on Friday it was like we did 10 then we took away four and it was six and then I was like what happens when you put the four back it takes you back to 10 and they saw like with their eyes how it connected like I could see the light bulbs going off in their brain they're like this makes sense I know how to do this with the fact families I was like yeah so that was exciting. Um, so I've been doing a lot of practice with the number line and modeling. We take story problems and we transfer them directly over to equations. We talk about how sum is not a number. So if it says you take sum away, we write a big old question mark because sum is not a number. And then we've been working on some number bonds, which I've never taught number bonds because it just wasn't in our past curriculum. But here's our little snowball number bond freebie. And they're kind of getting it. And it's kind of just like a math talk to connect the three numbers and say what goes in the blank and they can tell me the different equations they can make. It's like our number talks at the beginning. So that's the rant for math. It's the rant you probably didn't wanna hear. Um, it's just sad though, because I loved our old math curriculum that I used at my other school so much that math was like my favorite thing to teach because they just discovered strategies, they shared strategies. And like now, I, I like teaching reading more than I like teaching math. And I never thought I'd say that, but it's completely flip-flopped. Like I am way more confident in my ability to teach reading right now than I am in math because I'm just kind of like fumbling over this curriculum. And I feel like I don't know what's gonna come next. And I've been looking into it and like trying to look ahead, but you just never know. I'm trying really hard, but I'm trying to do math teaching how I feel like is best, but also using a curriculum and they're just, it's clashing heads. So some of the resources are great. Don't get me wrong. Some of it's good. It's not all bad, but I don't know. That's where my struggle is. I'm going to stop there because I think I've been ranting for like almost five minutes about math. Um, that's what we're doing in math. That's all I have for this Tuesday. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, y'all. It is Wednesday. 
I'm up here early working on stuff. I just picked up all of my copies. Let me show you this stack. Look at all these copies. <laughs> this was everything that I put in the copy room on Monday. It almost went through a whole pack of paper, but I'm like three weeks ahead on my seat work copies now. So next week we're doing long O, got it. Then we're doing O-U, O-W, got it. And then we're doing O-I, O-Y, got it. So I'm like way ahead on copies, which is awesome. So that's why it took up so much paper. And then I also went to the copy room to get these giant pieces of construction paper because I'm prepping for Valentine's Day stuff and we're going to make compliment hearts. I've shared this on my Instagram. I'll just like post the post right here, but basically they just cut or I will cut out like a heart and write their name in the middle and then we brainstorm like compliments we could give each other on Valentine's Day and then we take turns and we rotate to every person's desk and write a compliment on their heart and then students get to take them home at the end of the day to be a big Valentine from their class just to see some encouraging words. It's really sweet and they always turn out cute and it's a really easy Valentine's activity that takes a good bit of time. You can do a book with it about encouraging words and acts of kindness, brainstorm them together and then we rotate and write. So that's really fun but I have my practicum helpers coming today. And I was like, if I can pull the paper and get the template out of my file, they can help me trace and cut those out, which would be amazing because it would save me so much time. So I got that pulled, got my copies. Um, that's about it to update you on this morning. It's workout Wednesday because our theme this week is um, wellness, health and wellness for Black History Month and week. So we're focusing on like, um, African-American athletes and scientists and nutritionists and all of these things. So it's workout Wednesday. Our kids have a little workout time at one o'clock. We're like a local fitness place is sending some instructors out to do like a kid's workout with each grade level. And then the staff has a workout after school. So it's pretty exciting that I got to wear like my Under Armour pullover and my tennis shoes, which if you don't have on cloud shoes, these on cloud Swift, I love them. So like that could be the highlight of my day is just getting to wear my tennis shoes. Anyways, that's all I've got for you this morning. So I will check in with you guys later. It's going to be a busy day, so it'll probably be the end of the day. But I just thought I'd give you the update on what I'm working on this morning. Hello, it is Wednesday afternoon. I almost said Thursday. Wishful thinking, right? Wednesday afternoon. The day went pretty smooth. The little workout thing that my class did was really, really cute. They had a ton of fun. Um, and the guy who led it was very kid-friendly. Let's just say like he had so many management things and just like geared it towards a six-year-old audience which was great we did jumping jacks and squats and high knees and played red light green light to make it like a fun workout so that was really fun um and my practicum students helped me cut out all those hearts which was super fantastic now i am at the good old hobby lobby store sitting in the parking lot and i'm going to go in because i need to get white bags that we can use for their valentine bags on monday for our valentine's party well not party, we're just doing a Valentine exchange. And I'm also gonna look and see what they have for watercolors. I got an idea from my friend Janet. Here's a picture of what they looked like. And we're gonna make like love monster bags so the kids need to watercolor them tomorrow. And I think I'm gonna do watercolors tomorrow while I have practicum helpers. And then on Friday, we're gonna like glue the pieces for the face of the monster on there. So I'm going into Hobby Lobby to get those things. And then that's gonna be the end of my Wednesday. I'm going home to chill after that. Okay, I'm just coming back in and they did not have any white bags in the whole store except for like the teeny tiny ones, which should figure because it's February 9th and a lot of schools are probably doing their Valentine's party like this week on Thursday or Friday, I don't know. So we're nixing the watercolor idea, which is totally fine, what they don't know won't hurt them. And I got these instead, which are really cute colors. So they'll just get to pick and hopefully we don't have too many arguments. <laughs> they'll just get to pick what color they want their um, love monster bag to be and then I'll just print out all of the little feet and ears and stuff on white paper and they can color that in to match or color it in to coordinate however they want so problem solved okay I am home my husband just made a delicious meal I'm gonna highlight it right here pork loin and potatoes we're about to watch the season finale of Boba Fett on Disney Plus and I'm really heartbroken that it's the season finale because we're gonna have to wait a while for another episode but i piece a lot of this vlog together and realize it's getting extremely lengthy so i'm going to end this one here and put my thursday and friday for this week in a separate video so stay tuned make sure you give this video a thumbs up like and subscribe so you can see the rest of my week in my life sorry i've been so chatty y'all it's just ended up being a long long vlog and i don't want to keep you all hanging 
this long. So thanks if you're still watching and you're still hanging in there. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next little mini vlog.